So we would like to compute uh, a triple integral in spherical coordinates. <coughs> Excuse me, there will be a little bit of coughing in this video. Uh, so it's the triple integral of z dv over the domain u, uh, where u is the part of the ball of radius two centered at the origin Uh, for which x is greater than zero, y is greater than zero, and z is greater than zero, meaning it's the part that we usually refer to as the first octant. So in order to compute this integral, we're going to uh, transform into spherical coordinates, and that pretty much amounts to... Um, starting with our, our domain u and expressing it in uh, rho theta and phi, these are the spherical coordinates, uh, express the integral in terms of rho theta and phi. We should remember here that x is equal to uh, rho sine phi times cosine theta, and y is rho sine phi sine theta and z is rho cosine phi and the third step that we need to take is multiply by the jacobian which is rho square sine phi and then integrate here when we uh, work with spherical coordinates it's a good idea to remember that uh, as i said x is uh, rho uh, sine phi cosine theta. Actually, it's useful to remember that the R of spherical coordinates is rho sine phi. There's a little triangle that you can create and um, get. So if I am in the YZ plane, for example, um, and here's a point and the distance from the origin is rho, and then I have this triangle where I have the angle phi right here and the uh, vertical distance from the z-axis is really r. So, so from this little triangle, you can see that uh, x is, uh, that r is zero sine phi uh, because sine phi would be the opposite right side over the hypotenuse. And uh, this way you can remember pretty easily the formula. So for y, it will be your r, which is rho sine phi times uh, sine theta. And z is simply rho uh, cosine phi that also follows from this little triangle. And of course, you can remember that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to r rho squared. So we close the parentheses here. These are uh, things that you should remember in general about integration in spherical coordinates. And let's turn now to our specific problem. So let's start by expressing u in terms of spherical coordinates. I remind you that it's a part of the uh, ball of radius 2 centered at the origin uh, that lies in the first octant. So the points in that portion can be described in terms of the spherical coordinates uh, by rho theta phi, where uh, rho is between zero and two. Uh, theta is just restricted to zero to pi over two because the part that we're looking at projects to the uh, first quadrant. And phi is simply from zero to pi over two. So it's a box in spherical coordinates. So let's put the integral together. So uh, let's start with zero to two, uh, zero, and then zero to pi over two, uh, d theta, and then zero to pi over two, d phi. And 
uh, what is our integrand now? Our integrand is z, right? So z, as we said, is rho cosine phi. And finally, we need to multiply by the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is rho square sine phi. So this means that the integrand altogether is uh, rho square, I'm sorry, rho cubed uh, cosine phi sine phi. And at this point, uh, we should actually uh, just do the integration. So we can do the integration first with respect to rho. So that will give us uh, rho to the fourth over four times cosine phi times sine phi. And we want to go from rho equals zero to rho equals two. And then we need to integrate with respect to uh, d to theta from zero to pi over two. And finally, with respect to phi, also from zero to pi over two. So uh, this will give us what? This will give us, uh, if you plug in two, you will get uh, 16 over four, uh, which is four. So you will have zero to pi over two, zero to pi over two, uh, four cosine phi, uh, sine phi, d theta d phi. And now in terms of um, theta, this is a constant. So the antiderivative will be simply four cosine phi, sine phi times theta. And we go from zero to pi over two. And we have the last integration, which is with respect to d phi. So, um, so this will simply be zero to pi over two, uh, four cosine phi, sine phi, times pi over two, d phi, we can take the whole thing out and simplify it to two pi. And we have the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine phi, sine phi, d phi. Here we have a simple substitution. So u is equal to sine phi, du will be cosine phi, d phi. And we should not forget that when we do substitution, we apply the um, substitution formula to the limits of integration. So sine of zero is zero and sine of pi over two is one. So this will give us u du, which is two pi times um, u square over two. That's the antiderivative from zero to one. And this will be two pi times one half, which will eventually give us pi. Thanks for watching.